Afghan President Ashraf Ghani, along with his vice president and other senior officials, flew out of Afghanistan on Sunday, setting the stage for Taliban insurgents to regain power in the country 20 years after they were ousted by a U.S.-led military invasion. Governments worldwide were scrambling to react to the quickly changing situation on the ground. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson called on the Western nations to work together to address the situation in Afghanistan as the Taliban insurgency, insurgency takes control of Kabul. One issue is how to ha handle Afghan refugees. Britain has stated its commitment to accepting refugees from Afghanistan who aided British forces over the past 20 years. The United States has also committed to housing Afghans who served as translators and otherwise aided U.S. military efforts in the country. However, Washington is seeking partner countries to take in at-risk Afghans while their applications are being processed. Albania and Kosovo said Sunday they will accept some Afghanistan, uh, Afghans waiting on visas to the United States. The U.S. also said it's sending additional staff to Qatar, where many Afghan refugees are being processed. Pakistan's foreign minister said on national television that it cannot accept any more Afghan refugees and is continuing to work on fencing along its border. Iranian state media reports the government has set up hundreds of tents in three regions bordering Afghanistan, but that it expects refugees inhabiting those tents to return home when the situation improves. While many nations are evacuating and shutting down their embassies in Kabul, the United Nations said this weekend that it is committed to keeping its agencies open amid the crisis. Haiti's Civil Protection Service says the death toll from Saturday's 7.2 magnitude earthquake has risen to 1,297 as rescuers continue to search for survivors in the ruins of shattered buildings on the country's southwest peninsula. The number of injured is now thought to be more than 5,700. Bruno Mays, the representative in Haiti for the United Nations Children's Fund, or UNICEF, said the UN is calling for a humanitarian corridor in Haiti to allow quicker and safer transfer of goods and people. Mays explained to Reuters news agency that the UN is really asking armed gangs in Haiti to allow safe passage for humanitarian aid vehicles. So far, aid supplies have been difficult to deliver to the town of Lakai and the surrounding villages because of gang violence. Meanwhile, the country's bracing for Tropical Storm Grace, which is predicted to reach Haiti late Monday or early Tuesday, bringing the potential for torrential rain, flooding and landslides. The United States National Hurricane Center forecasts 10 to 20 centimeters of rain in Haiti and its neighbor, the Dominican Republic. Prime Minister Ariel Henry has declared a one-month state of emergency for the entire country of Haiti and said he was rushing aid to affected areas. Nigerian authorities said Sunday on Sunday imposed a cur curfew in parts of central state a day after a suspected Christian militia attacked a convoy of 90 Muslims and killed at least 23. Police claim Saturday's deadly attack also injured nearly two dozen people and 20 suspects have been arrested while 33 victims have been rescued. Northwest and central Nigeria has for years struggled with violence between mainly Muslim nomadic herders and Christian farmers over control of resources, water, and land. Violence in central Nigeria is just one of the challenges facing Africa's most populous country. Security forces are also battling a 12-year jihadist insurgency in the Northeast, kidnap gangs in the Northwest, and separatist agitation in the Southeast. Veteran Zambian opposition leader Hakainde Hichilema has, appears on the verge of clinching the country's presidency as the vote count continues. The 59-year-old businessman who's contesting the presidency for the sixth time has more than 2.3 million votes, compared to 1.4 million for incumbent President Edgar Lungu. A Zambia's electoral commission announced those partial results on Sunday. The winner of last Thursday's election uh, needs more than 50 percent of the vote to avoid a runoff, and election officials have promised full results by Monday.
Hi, thank you for watching. I hope the videos are useful for you. Please subscribe to my channel using the button below.